We are preparing for the Center for Women and Families night of um, there's a celebration of service and survival, and it's a night where we will honor and celebrate the women of distinction. Uh, I celebrate this wonderful woman more times than you can count, Maddie Jones, Mother Maddie, who is uh, just so wonderful. Elizabeth Wessels Martin, still with us, who is the president. Mother Maddie. Good morning. You know I love you. <laughs> you know I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> yes, I you do. have been honored in so many ways, so many times for so many things. So I'm sure that this does not surprise you. But how does this feel for you with the Center for Women and Families? Well, it makes me feel like that I have done something that helps somebody. And that is how I've dedicated my life being able to help somebody. And when people pay an honor to me, or if they just say, keep on going, that keeps me motivated to keep on moving. That's why I can't stop. Now, Mother Maddie, I know that you will not be offended by this because I know you well. You say when somebody honors you this way, it says, keep on going. You've been going for a long time. You've been fighting for everyone for a long time. And how old are you? I'm going to let everybody do the math. <laughs> March the 28th, 1933. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. There you go. And, and she is proud of that. And I am proud of that, too, because when I get her age, I, I pray that I'm able <laughs> to do the things that she is able to do. Um, you have always been a person... I mean, I remember as a little girl seeing you step out. I mean, I'd be down here and I'd look up and watch you and you would go tell somebody, that's not right. That's not what we're going to do. Where did that come from in you? Where does, where does that come from for you to stand up and say, we've got to do better all the time? Well, you know, there's not anything like a self-made woman. And I'm not self-made. Everybody that helped me along the way, I, my mother was a very strong woman. And then I met other folks that helped me along the way and people that I seen doing things that I knew what I should be involved doing it. And I've never been a person that just want to sit and see something being done and say, oh, that's just terrible. I've just been person want to get out there and learn and when I seen other people my neighbor was Georgia Davis Power. Yeah, I love Powers. her. Oh my love goodness. Her. She invited yeah. me to a meeting one afternoon and that was one step that said hey when I met those men that came into her house and women that was in that uh, move from uh, of the bus cart in, in Georgia of making that move to change things and I said you know I've got to change things. Some of these things are not right. And then put my thinking cap on me. And as I traveled along the way, I've met a lot of people that have just influenced me and made me feel good and let me know that you just don't sit down and complain. You just got to do something. Do you ever get scared? I know uh, there were times when I would sit with uh, Senator Powers and... Um, she would tell me those stories of things that she did, and I would think, she's crazy, you know? <laughs> and I, I saw some of the things that, that you and uh, uh, everyone, you know, you all would do, and I would think, how do you find the strength or how do you get over the fear to mm -hmm. do those things? Where does that come from? Well, that came from my mother because she always said to me, look, just don't sit around here and grumble. It takes a, a body of people to change things. And she says, now, if you want to get really involved, there's NAACP, and I did. I joined NAACP years ago. But I met another gentleman on the way one day. I was doing something, and Roosevelt Roberts, he had an organization called Black Workers Coalition. Well, I had a taste of being mistreated in the workplace. And so I went to his meeting. And from there on, I began to meet other good people that were striving. And, you know, that's where you get your strength, when you know mm -hmm. you've got someone behind you. And when you know you determine. And I met so many people along the way, and that's why I keep saying I'm not self-made. It's, it's, we use the cliche of it takes a whole village, you know, to raise. It takes a whole community, and it's, they're still working with me. And 
They haven't finished with me yet, I, I guess. <laughs> I'm still able to go on. Yes, you And are. the encouragement, and even now some of the young people that's getting on the bus in the morning, I walk out to the bus stops in the morning, and uh, they have encouraging words for me. Some call me Nana, some call me Mama Jones, some call me Miss Maddie. And, you know, those are the things that helps build you as you travel. You can't be a selfish person no. and think you can do it all. And I never felt like I could do it all, but I've always felt that, hey, Maddie Jones, you can do your part. Well, you, you have done your part. I guess for the Center for Women and Families, like she says, somebody has to be behind you. Right. You don't do it alone. That's where you all come in. That's exactly right. You are behind those people who have to have that help. They've got the strength. They can do it. But they're, they're, sometimes those women or men come to you and all they have is what you see them in. That's exactly Sometimes right. Sometimes with a baby on the hip. That's exactly right. And you need help. You 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 can't do it alone. So that, that money, those gift cards, those things that come to you, those things are life saving things. They absolutely are. They absolutely are. I had a woman the other day ask me for a hairbrush. And somebody who about can you imagine that? Half of us would take that for granted. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. She said, Can I can I have a hairbrush? And somebody somebody was in there who was brand new and, and said to me, they needed a hairbrush. I said, they come with the clothes on their back and sometimes no shoes, nothing. And so we have we provide everything, but we also provide that strength and we want and we remind survivors they have the strength because they have survived. And and, and we're gonna just keep pushing them and supporting them just like Maddie said. It takes a whole village. It takes people in the community, it takes the center to be able to do that and to be able to have those things. And like you said, the gift cards, gas cards. We gave somebody who's been with us three months, love, wonderful woman. She worked so hard, but she was going back home. She needed a gas card. She didn't have any gas to get there. And so just the simple things that we do, we take for granted every single day. The survivors that come to us don't have that. And so we absolutely need that and we depend on the community for that. What's the theme for this year's celebration of service? In darkness, light will persist. Always. Always. Light will always persist. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that you will be a part of that celebration of service. If you can't come, please go to their website and give. And don't ever think what you have to give is not enough. Through darkness, light persists. Always. Celebration of Service and Survival will be March 11th. 2003 at Melwood Art Center. There's all of the wonderful women of distinction for 2003. You see them listed there. It will be an honor to just celebrate them. You can go to thecenteronline.org slash COSS for your ticket. We'll meet another wonderful woman of distinction coming up next. Stay with us.